Good morning. So someone asked me to see a video of the USB keyboard interface working. And uh, actually I had a couple of keyboards uh, to test because um, on one, the, the, the upper one here from Microsoft, uh, I had some delays when uh, pressing the same key um, a couple of times. So not all key presses were um, picked up. So I was spending some time to figure out if I did something wrong, but in the end it was just a keyboard. So I grabbed another one and I got more. I think I've got like 10 keyboards to test, but it's good to know um, which problems I will encounter. So I can write them down and other ones can, um, other ones know that you can expect some issues with certain older keyboards, you know? But anyway, I got a quite a decent keyboard. I'm, I'm not sure this is a Dell keyboard. Uh, it's a still membrane keyboard, so such such like the ZX Spectrum itself. But anyway, that doesn't matter. It's uh, it's plugged in the uh, USB. Uh, you can barely see it, but the USB um, host controller, and you can see it's powered on because uh, it uses a badge USB cable going to my uh, computer where I'm programming the software in uh, Arduino actually. Uh, why Arduino? Well, it's uh, easier to learn. So the, the uh, lower uh, board there is the Arduino, which is uh, just an Atmega uh, microcontroller with a programmer um, in one on one board and all, all the I.O. stuff uh, you can easily wire up if you want to. Uh, but of course, in the end, I will just use an Atmega controller and uh, put it on a uh, custom board that will plug into the ZX Spectrum. The same for the USB host board. This is the uh, the most uh, customizable one, but you have a mini version, uh, and I hope I will be able to obtain the chips cheaply. So I'm not sure yet, uh, because I have seen that when you want to order the the chips that on are on here, uh, they they might cost something like six or seven euros, which is extremely expensive, uh, especially if you know that you can buy the mini version of this USB host for less than six euro in um, China. So why, why are the chips so expensive? I don't know. We'll find out. Um, but in the end, I'm, I'm already thinking of what the price will be for the first version of the keyboard interface. Um, it's not that bad. It's, it's quite good, actually. Um, especially because you can just plug in a plain USB keyboard. Uh, so um, I'm not going into all the details at the moment. Um, Andrew Owen already asked me if, it, if it's based on a switch matrix and it is it's the, the chip in the middle here on the uh, adapter board uh, but I want to show you that it works so I'm powering on the ZX Spectrum on this uh, odd placed television <laughs> uh, the television has some delay don't, don't worry uh, especially sound is it's, uh, terrible so I'm using a ZX Spectrum 48k with its own speaker and I've I, I could wire up these uh, speakers. Oh, why not, by the way? Let's just do that so you can hear the clicks, the keyboard clicks immediately, which is good, I think. Uh, and it does have a, uh, some noise. I'm not sure why. It's on uh, only on this uh, setup. I don't know. And uh, usually the keyboards, uh, the, the speakers are uh, just silent if nothing is output being output. Um, anyway, so. You can hear there's almost no delay. I'm, I'm not sure if this is no delay or as fast as the ZX Spectrum. It's hard to tell. But anyway, we can just type in something. Um, so I've mapped the control keys to the symbol shift uh, at the moment. So that works. And I can even use uh, shift as cap shift. Oh no, typo. Why not use the backspace? Hey. Just joking. This is, of course, all basic stuff, but uh, I had to spend some time to get it all in the software. So that works. Uh, why not do edit? And oh, I cannot use the, <laughs> the arrows just yet. So I have to use the shift and then eight. And it works as well. And I want to add and run. Oh, of course, 20 go to 10. So you can see I'm able to write a simple program um, with cap shift and simple shift keys etc and that works so I'm, I'm, I'm really quite happy so let's add some colors red nice 
just because we can. I mean, you know, it's a ZX Spectrum, so what do you expect? Anyway, that works. Um, I'm happy uh, so far. Um, as I said, uh, it would not be uh, extremely expensive, but still the, the chips that are in here, for like, like this one is the most expensive, I guess. It's about six euro and I, I'm, I'm, I do not, I'm not guessing I will be able to order that cheaply from China because those are special chips. Uh, and for the first version, I'm going to use this uh, setup, this so this configuration with these chips, not with the Arduino or something like that, but um, with the same uh, parts, but then on a smaller circuit board. Uh, but for the second version, uh, I think I will dig into replacing this matrix array chip by a CPLD chip. Uh, that is possible because you then can, can combine uh, that matrix array with the a logic chip that uh, only uh, passes through the data signals to the spectrum when a keyboard is read out. Um, so that will be for a second version and that will also make it possible to, uh, for example, implement a mouse interface and, and more stuff. Uh, what I am still looking into for the first version of the keyboard interface is um, uh, being able to trigger reset and being able to trigger NMI um, and what else? Uh, don't know. Yeah, maybe uh, I can use the analog inputs of the Atmega chips for uh, some configuration. Like uh, if you want, uh, if you're using a US keyboard or a UK keyboard or something else, and how you want to the, the shift keys and control keys to behave. Maybe maybe I can do that with some dip switches. I think that's fairly easy, uh, though it will require some more programming. But uh, this is just. A lot of fun. This is what I what I'm doing in between all the hassle of bookkeeping and email. And uh, but I'm I'm now getting back to my email because people are waiting. Uh, so just wanted to upload this video and let me know if you like it. Uh, let's just put it on YouTube.